Okay, g'day all. Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, another bit of assembly today. So what I want to look at today is uh, testing the code that we looked at last time. So I typed out a bunch of assembly code and hopefully it's pretty close to what we want, but it mightn't be. So we need a good way to test it uh, to see if it's correct or not. So the first thing that'll come up if you try and run what I typed last time is that um, this should be ink instead of in. Yeah. Okay, it's not a big deal, so we'll just move on. Um, I did forget to delete all of these uh, heap allocated uh, arrays just here, so it might be a good idea to delete those. Otherwise, you know, Bill will get angry at us. Delete, delete, and delete. Okay, so our our box blur asm seems to run okay, but we're not real sure, so we need a way to test it. What I might do is set up some random floats in original image here. So for int i equals zero, while i is less than uh, this number just here, i plus plus, and well, I might say original image i equals rand mod 1000 and divided by 1000.0f. Okay, so it's not going to set up a very good picture. It's going to be random. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not actually random. You know, rand is not is not really random. I think they use a modulus trick there, but it will have some sort of pattern, but I mean it's irrelevant at the moment. So, we've just set up a bunch of uh, random elements for our original image. That's 800 and by 640 pixels, and they're all going to be set to something like, um, you know, between 0.0, .0 floating point and uh, 0 0.999 floating point. So that's a close approximation to what our actual images are going to look like. Uh, let me just put a break point here. Um, okay, so to know if our box blur asm is correct, uh, what we need is some sort of benchmark to uh, measure it against. Um, and we know uh, that our C++ is correct, or we've accepted that our C++ is correct. That mightn't actually be correct, but that's what we're going to use for the benchmark. So in here, in the uh, box blur DLL, uh, where we've got the uh, working C++ horizontal and vertical blur, um, I just want to copy that horizontal blur and uh, paste, it, paste it into our box blur debug. Oops. Yeah, so this will give us a pretty good idea of uh, how close we are to um, actually doing this uh, box blur the same as the um, C++. But let me just uh, fix a few things up. So I'll make another function here. I'll call it box blur CPP. And we're just going to assume that this gives us the correct value. Uh, let me just pop a... There you go, matey. Okay, close the uh, code block there. Uh, there's going to be a few other changes to box blur CPP because, you know, we're in a console program at the moment. It doesn't have the uh, track bar that we had before. Uh, instead, we pass blur width to this function with a um, parameter. So I'll just delete that and give it a save. Um, okay, so the other thing that we need in our box blur debug is this float 4 that the C++ used in order to sort of mimic SIMD. So I'll just copy that file, uh, float4.h and paste it over here. Um, float four. Okay, I'll give that a save. We'll come back to main and we're just about ready to run this algorithm. So what I'll do is uh, write two outputs. Um, front image ASM and the other one will be front image CPP. Okay, so the assembly is going to output to a bunch of floats, and the CP, C++ is going to output to a bunch of other floats, and what we want to know is how close they are together. So let me just call those two functions, uh, box blur no, CPP, and it takes all of the same parameters except for it outputs to CPP. Um, okay, so we've just got another, another couple of things to do before we can... Uh, run this. Front image asm doesn't exist, so I better define that. It's going to be at the top. Uh, there it is there. Um, float 4 doesn't exist, so I better include my header. Include uh, float 4.h. Uh, just housekeeping, and uh, this should be that. And we also want to delete 
see a a. Um, okay, I think we're just about ready to run these two algorithms and test how close their outputs are, but I have just remembered that the um, C++ actually went on to do a uh, vertical blur, so it writes to H blur. Yeah, and we don't actually want that. We want them both to write to their respective um, front image parameters. So I might just put in here front image. Okay, I'll just give it a run to make sure we're building okay. Yeah, okay, it looks pretty good. So now what we've got to do is... Uh, create some sort of metric. We want some number uh, to tell us how close these two outputs are, front image ASM and front image CPP. We want them to be ideally as close as possible. So one of the simplest, actually I might use doubles, uh, one of the simplest uh, measures of error is just an error sum uh, between the two. So we'll step through every um, element in the, uh, in the image. What have I... For poor. <laughs> okay, we'll step through every single element. That's the red, green, and blue, uh, and alpha elements of uh, all 800 by 640 pixels, and each time we'll sum up the error, the difference between them. So front image dot asm i minus front image dot cpp i. Okay, so this you've got to be a little bit careful of if. If there is a difference, maybe there's a big positive difference. So maybe front image ASM has some, you know, large element that's, um, you know, vastly larger than uh, front image CPP. But later on uh, in these two arrays, there's a, there's a particular element where the assembly is particularly lower than um, your front image CPP. What you're going to get is a cancelling effect. Um, we don't want that. We want the absolute difference. So ABS is what we want. Yeah, something like that. So the error sum plus equals the uh, absolute difference of these two, which means that if you know the assembly is different in one direction at one point in the arrays and it's different in another direction at some other point in the arrays, then we're not going to get this cancelling effect. Okay, so this is just a basic way to test uh, how similar um, the two arrays are. So at the end we'll print that out. Error sum. Okay, something like that. And the other metric that we might like to use uh, is uh, just a simple count of how many floats are different between the two images. So, um, I might call this error count and set it to zero. It's just going to be an integer. So the, the first thing that you might try is, um, well, if, if front image ASM does not equal front image CPP, then error count plus plus. Okay, so that's the first thing that you might try. That's not actually going to help us very much, but we'll see why in just a second. Um, so the error count. Okay, something like that. So we've got our error sum uh, incrementing the uh, absolute difference between each element, and we've got our error count counting up every time there is a difference between the two floats. Let's give it a play and see what happens. Well, set a breakpoint first. Oh, I better put it into um, debug mode. Um, okay, so there we go. So that's the two outputs that we've got. We've got uh, thirteen thousand is our error sum, and our error count is huge. It's you know two million. So what's happening? Well, it's pretty. It's pretty easy to fix at the moment. There's something rather silly that I've done, and uh, it's. The assembly code is assuming that on the outside of the image um, there's see-through, it's clear. And uh, it's blurring that into the borders of the image, whereas the C++ code is um, assuming that on the outside there is actually white, 100% uh, white. Uh, so what I might do for now is uh, change the C++ code to also assume that there's clear on the outside. Yeah, we want the algorithms to be as close as possible. Uh, I hope in the end to uh, look at um, you know how you would change the assembly code to pretend that there's white on the outside or, or you know black or, or a few different options just like we did with the C++ but for now uh, the easiest way to fix this is uh, just to change the C++ code okay so we'll run it again now both of our uh, algorithms are assuming there's clear on the outside of the image we'll give it another run and we should see that the uh, Error sum is much smaller. There you go, 246.781.
And what does that mean? You know, who knows what that means? Um, it seems like a pretty big number, you know, 246, not that small, but uh, if you consider, uh, if you consider what that number represents, so there's 800, let me just, 800 by 640 by 4 elements in our image, that's 2048000 elements. That's how many floats there are in our image, and it's not a big number considering that's the number of elements in the images. Um, that number might also look familiar. Uh, if we come back here and we look at the error count, that is exactly what that number is, 2048000. And that's telling us that there's not one single float that's the same between the two. The C++ code never returns exactly the same float as the assembly. And that might be alarming, but um, actually, actually you wouldn't expect it to. Um, actually, if anything, the uh, SIMD code will be more accurate, uh, ever so slightly more accurate than your C++, since SIMD tends to do uh, less floating point operations per element. Um, and, you know, the, the fewer floating point operations you can do, um, usually the uh, more precise your results will be. So we want to allow some little margin of error. And uh, what I might do is say, um, if the absolute difference between the two, if the absolute difference between the two is greater than 0 0.001, well, I might put another zero in there. Okay, if the absolute difference between the two is greater than what's that, one ten thousandth, then we want the error count to count up because there's a pretty alarming, you know, big difference between some elements. Uh, otherwise, we don't want the error count to count up. Okay, let's have another run and see how we're going. Um, okay, so there we go. So the error sum is obviously still the same. We didn't change that at all. But now we see that we've got, what, 1.8 million um, differences in our um, floating point values. So that's um, clearly uh, too small a margin. We might just uh, make that 1,000th. Uh, so if the assembly and the front image CPP differ by 1,000th one, one or more, we want it to uh, tell us. And there we go. So with a, with a, with an error margin of one in one thousand, um, the C plus plus and the assembly agree completely. Yeah, which is pretty good news. It means that they're basically giving the same answer. Uh, but now I want to look at another. This is a really interesting trick. So you look at something like two four six point seven eight one as the error sum, and you, you might be inclined to think, well, what does that mean? You know, is that is that far or not? Uh, it doesn't seem far when you consider that we've got two million uh, elements. Uh, but we really want some other way to visualize this, so we're going to do a really cool trick. Um, we're going to calculate the Euclidean distance between the two. This is pretty out there. It's a, it's a weird thing to think about, but we're, we're programmers and we're not concerned with uh, multi-dimensional shapes and things. So what we're going to do is pretend that um, front image ASM and front image CPP are points in uh, n-dimensional space. And the number of dimensions, it's not three like we're used to seeing, and it's not sort of four or five. Uh, no, the number of dimensions is two million. Okay, so we're going to imagine two points in uh, two million dimension space, and we're going to calculate the distance between them. Um, don't worry about visualizing it, uh, but it's something like this. Okay, you take the square of the differences each time. Okay, you take the square of the differences each time. It's exactly the same if you're calculating the difference of um, two points in, say, two-dimensional space or three-dimensional space. Um, you take the square of the difference of each dimension, and at the very end, uh, you take the square root of that. Okay, now before we run this, just a little bit about what this means. It's very, very difficult to uh, visualize, and thankfully you don't have to. I mean, we're just using arrays here and a few simple... Um, a few simple sums, we're just calculating the square of the difference. So what it means is um, it's going to give us the difference in units. Yeah, so one doesn't necessarily mean like one meter or anything, but it might help to uh, imagine it like that. If I just hit play and we imagine that um, one means that these two are one meter apart in um, two million D space. <laughs> Let's have a look. Okay, look at that. Look at that. So the error sum is very, very small. 
I might just change that to um, instead of error sum, we'll call it distance. And I'll run it again. So that gives us a really good indication of something. Um, we're no longer talking about you know some random sum. Um, 247 was a pretty good number, but it doesn't mean anything to us. Whereas this number just here does uh, 0 0.17 units apart. Yeah, that's very very close. That's less than one fifth of a unit. Um, and there's two million elements in these two. Uh, arrays here, so that's you know these two points in uh, two million d space are extremely close to each other, um, which seems to suggest that our assembly is uh, giving the right answer. Okay, let's just have a bit of a pause, and what we really want to do is, um, you know, if the if if the error sum, if this distance and the error count seem to indicate that the two are pretty close together, uh, I think the final thing to do and the most fun thing to do is uh, copy the assembly over to our DLL. And uh, have a look in uh, Imogen and see if it looks right. Um, okay, so I've actually added an assembly file to my DLL. All and paste. There we go. I'll just paste that into my assembly file. I'll come over here to uh, box blur form, and I'll scroll up the top just to show the um, here the prototype. Okay, so that's the prototype there to the function. Yeah, just in case. I think I might have written that off camera. I'm not sure, but I think I might have. Okay, and we'll scroll down to where the uh, box blur is actually outputting, or where the C++ usually goes, and I'll just comment out the C++. We're not interested in uh, timing anything at the moment, but I'll comment out the C++ and instead just call the uh, horizontal blur. Well, you don't just paste. Settle down. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's called box blur assum. Uh, height, width, um, original image, uh, front image, H blur, and the width that we want to blur is the track bar value. Okay, there we go. So we just want to call our box blur assum. It's actually a horizontal blur at the moment, but uh, hopefully it'll build and uh, we can then take that DLL and uh, put it in Imogen and see what happens. Okay, build succeeded. Good news. Let's have a look. Uh, here it is here. So box blur DLL. Fingers crossed. This is pretty scary. Uh, although our, our, our distance uh, calculation from a minute ago tells us that uh, the C++ and the assembly are basically the same. Uh, so it's not that scary. Um, Alright, let's just uh, open up a picture. Let's get a picture of my car I took earlier this morning. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I drive a Kia. Um, okay, show hide plugins. And here's the box blur plugin. Alright, will it do a horizontal blur? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Looks like a horizontal blur to me. Okay, good stuff. It's pretty quick too. 0 0.05 of a second. Now let's just close that down and open up a slightly bigger image. No, I don't want to save it. Thanks for asking though. Okay, here we go. The big Mars picture. This is one of the best pictures I've ever seen. I love this. It's very, very cool. Um, plugins. Let's see if it can horizontal blur this one. So this is a huge image. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, 174 milliseconds. So it's it's uh, just shy of uh, one fifth of a second. Yeah, so it's doing it's doing this blur in uh, you know, just a bit quicker than uh, five frames a second, which is not too bad considering the size of the image. You know, it's a fairly it's a very very large image. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that, but we will be able to get a lot quicker. Uh, I hope, anyway. Um, okay, I didn't save it, so it went back to this. Uh, okay, so the um, error analysis that we did a minute ago is pretty important if you ever want to know if uh, a port is working. Yeah, grab your original working port and uh, test your floats against it, if you're using floats, of course. Um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Uh, next time I think we'll get onto the vertical blur. We'll see how we go. And uh, hopefully uh, combined together they won't be too slow and uh, later on after that we can uh, see if we can optimize it a bit, make it even faster. Anyway, I hope that was helpful, a bit of uh, error analysis when you're porting code. Thanks for watching. See ya.